In this video, we'll be setting up this NA10 workflow, enabling us to view our emails from Notion. In the process, we will learn some key functionality of NA10. If you'd like to follow along, click on the link in the description to use this workflow. Let's now take a look at what this workflow achieves. In Gmail, select the emails you'd like to send to Notion and label them with a special tag. Now in Notion, after a short moment, they will show up and be available to view. Once you are done with the email, you can mark it as complete, triggering your automation to remove the label from Gmail. Now let's take a look at the workflow in detail. If you haven't already, let's start by copying this workflow template and pasting it into our editor. We will now go through the process of setting up the Gmail and Notion credentials. Let's start with Gmail. Open the node and create new credential. In this dialog, we'll open the docs and we'll scroll down until we see Google Cloud Console, APIs and services. Now let's head to create credentials, OAuth client ID, and choose the application type web application. Change the name to NA10 or another name that suits. We don't need to worry about authorized JavaScript origins and we will add our authorized redirect URI. Now that we are done, we can click Create. And we can copy the client ID and client secret into our account. If you're finding this video helpful so far, let us know by leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. Now we can sign into Gmail. And that's it, we're connected. The next thing we want to make sure is that we have enabled the correct APIs and services. In this case, we'll be using the Gmail node. So we need to use the Gmail API. And as you can see, there's a tick here. So we already have API enabled for Gmail. Now let's set up our Notion credentials. Once again, let's open the docs and scroll down until we see Notion integration guide. We will scroll further down in the actual Notion documentation and open up the developer portal for Notion. Here we will create a new integration and call it NA10 demo, but you can call it anything you like. Now we can copy the secret and paste it back into Notion as our API key. Let's hit save and just do one more thing. Back in Notion, let's give our new integration access to our target Notion page. And that's it, we've got everything connected. Let's change the workflow title. And now our workflow is complete. Let's make sure we have all the necessary prerequisites to be able to run the workflow. To begin with, let's ensure that we have created our special label. And in Notion, ensure that we have at least three fields, the title, email thread, and thread ID. If you have an existing to-do list, ensure that you have these three fields by creating them if required. Now let's take a look at the actual workflow, step by step. One big thing you will notice is two trigger nodes. NA10 allows this type of flexibility, essentially making this workflow a two-in-one. The schedule node will trigger every minute. And the next node will determine the previous time the workflow was triggered. In this case, we simply subtract one minute away from the current time. Of course, if you decide to change the schedule trigger node, you will need to change this node to match. 
Now we get into the meat of the workflow. This is where we make our first query into Gmail, obtaining any emails from our specific label. We actually have no output data returned here, since we don't have any emails marked with our target label. So let's tag an email real quick. Now that that is done, let us trigger the Gmail node again, and this time we will return one item. Awesome. In the next node, we will attempt to find the email in our target Notion database called todos. If we cannot find the email on this page, then it means it is the first time this email was processed. We use the email thread ID to determine if the email exists. Executing the node returns no emails from Notion, allowing us to proceed to the next step. We use the merge node here to do two things. Firstly, it allows us to merge output data from the two previous nodes by a specific field. In this case, we merge the ID field in Gmail and the property thread ID field in Notion. Secondly, this merge node allows us to ensure that we have all the required data before moving on to the next piece of logic. If the database is not found, then we create the new row in Notion. This node is really simple. If the thread ID property from Notion doesn't exist in our merge data, then our Notion database does not have the thread yet. We have this extra step here that finds the currently connected Google account's email address through a custom HTTP node, which connects to the Gmail API. And finally, we create the new page to show our email. Again, change the database to our target database and ensure that all the properties are correctly mapped. Let's execute this node and see it available in Notion. So our final database page will look something like this, but you can of course customize the looks to suit your needs. We like the simplicity of this one. Once we are happy with the email, let's mark it as done. Going back to N8N, this should have triggered our Notion node, but looking closer, ah, we forgot to change the database. Fetching the test event again, we get the page that we just updated. Now, we should expect the next node to output true, since we just checked off the to-do, but it looks like it's not correctly processing through. Looking closer into the node, it seems that JSON complete is not a valid field. So let's remap this field to the correct property from the previous node. Let's run this node once again, and this time we output into the true branch. Finally, this last node will remove the label from the email that was just marked as complete. And we are done. If you found this tutorial helpful, come and explore more integrations and unlock the full potential of NA10.